Wow. Hello, everybody. Happy Monday. I have no idea what day it is. June 21st, 2021. Uh, welcome to another episode of Titanic Talks. And boy, is there a lot to talk about. I feel like it has been a month and a half um, since I have made one of these and it's been one week. Um, I just spent the past couple of days in Northern Michigan, beautiful, pure Michigan. And if you've been there before, you know what I'm talking about. And I was in the woods sleeping in a tent off grid and you want to talk about recharging yourself. Holy smokes. I feel like a whole new person now. Um, just being able to kind of, you know, collect thoughts, collect seashells by the, the seashore, by the lake shore. Um, <clears throat> and spent some very quality time with the family. Uh, the whole family was there for the first time in a very long time. And, uh, it was good for the, good for the soul. Very, uh, good for the heart and the soul. And, um, first and foremost, uh, to our channel members here, good golly, that was a bit of a conundrum. Uh, I was, I was not well equipped to be able to upload, um, an hour long 4k <laughs> video as I had planned. Yeah, but I had all of my, um, my camera gear. So I said, well, let's just shoot something. And I had a beautiful shot set up with the trees in the forest, uh, which is why I made the color green here. I suppose maybe this is a turquoise, maybe a sea foam situation. Um, got the, the framing and the exposure and everything perfect. And uh, I was testing out a, a new microphone and so exciting. And the last thing to set up was the mini XLR to XLR, a very, <laughs> very rare cable to go into our black magic pocket 4k cinema camera here. And it was not in my bag. It was in my studio in Texas. Um, so my apologies. It's uh, a bit of a heartbreaking situation for me. And uh, But to compensate for this week, um, I did get some some pretty cool footage that's going to go into an extra special. So channel members will get two videos uh, this week as well. Some other, uh, goodies that I captured along the way. Very fun, uh, times though. Um, you know, sitting by the lake, I was, I was at Hagen's Lake. And, um, if, if you're a Michigander or perhaps, um, a, uh, a, a, a fanatic of the Midwest or the Great Lakes region, which is where I am from, uh, you, you, you may know about Higgins Lake, uh, being one of National Geographic's, uh, top 10 most beautiful freshwater lakes in the world. <laughs> I grew up, uh, going there and, um, I, I gotta say it, it, it really did change my perspective, um, as I ramp up here to do some pretty, pretty big videos and big projects. Um, and just, you know, cool things are kind of happening again, which is, uh, kind of bizarre. Um, life kind of can get a bit chaotic and confusing. And, um, when you're, when you're producing things yourself or, or if you're running your own business, um, it can be, uh, you, you, there's always 50 things going on at once and you, you have to really prioritize. Um, and I just happened to have this trip booked at, a, at the time where everything's just starting to go into full blown, uh, production. 
Um, and I think it was the best possible thing to have, uh, to have happened. And, um, you know, just seeing everyone, I, I wasn't able to see really, um, anyone in my family for, uh, as, as many of you, um, probably have had to kind of go through, you know, the holidays were, were not spent with the family. And so, um, it's, it was, you know, over like a year of, of not seeing anyone. So, uh, that was, it was really good, you know, just sitting around the campfire and, and, um, telling stories and, and laughing and, um, I haven't laughed like that in a while. Um, my, uh, my, my family t tends to, um, really encourage laughter. Um, and late at night sitting around the campfire, those are usually where the biggest laughs come from. So it was good and spent some time, um, kayaking. And so that, uh, reminded me that I like to be in the water uh, and, uh, I'm a bit of a fish, did a little bit of swimming and some good old fashioned, um, pontoon ing. <laughs> if you've never, if you've never been on a pontoon, um, or experienced pontoon culture, um, it really is something else. It's basically just like a, like a deck that floats. Um, it's a boat, <clears throat> but, uh, not, not, not a speed boat or, or anything like that. Uh, though, though they can go a considerable, um, speed. Typically you just kind of put it out there in the middle of the lake and that's it. And, uh, you, you, you talk and enjoy cold beverages. <laughs> so that was, that was the past couple of days. And, um, you know, I, I gotta say that the, the flying experience is, is uh, it's interesting to be doing that again. And um, quick shout out to Delta Airlines. I, I've, I still love you, American, but uh, and I have an insane amount of miles. Um, but I might be making the switch uh, because of the staff. Um, probably some of the the coolest and nicest, uh, flight crew I've ever experienced. Uh, and that's saying a lot. I've flown around the world about, I think eight times in full now, something like that. Yeah. I would have to do the math, something like half a million miles. Um, but they, they, uh, you know, they, they've got millions of miles in the air. And so they really know the routine, but, um, it was good. It was a really good experience. And, uh, I was, I was very su surprisingly impressed for the first time in a long time with the airline experience. Have you flown since this, uh, world shutting down situation? Little, little, uh, little strange, you know, you're kind of like looking around a little bit more. Um, and the terminal, uh, I was flying out of, um, to get here. This is, by the way, this is the first thing I've done. <laughs> Landed, slept. Here we are <laughs> right back into it. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was nuts kind of, um, as I was going through the terminal to, uh, to get some udon noodles, uh, just overhearing all of the, the sounds and, and seeing the sights of, um, people from all around the world, um, and just being reminded like, oh yeah, like that's, you, you can just fly around the world, but I know everyone's kind of got their... Everyone has their 
uh, rules and regulations, which are understandable. Um, but a very, uh, yeah, like a, a, a very interesting, um, thought provoking, introspective, laugh filled, sun filled couple of days. Um, and I, uh, I, I highly recommend if anything, if you're feeling kind of tightly wound, um, even if just for a night, if, if you can spend, if you can spend the night, excuse me, if you can spend the night outdoors, I would highly, highly recommend that. Um, and we, we did, we did several nights. So, so that was good. Um, and, and just what a, what a, what an adventure really, that's what it, what it felt like. Um, after spending so much time inside and here just in this studio, um, starting this whole new project and, and process and figuring all the new gear out and, you know, um, I guess I didn't realize, uh, how much time inside I, I really was spending. Um, and, and now that, that things are looking a lot better globally, um, I had, I had kind of forgotten what, uh, what even a small or quick adventure can do for your happiness, I guess. Um, not, th not that I, w I was feeling unhappy, but just the great outdoors, it just, it, it, uh, inspires something else. Um, it was pretty interesting though, just using like the little propane. I'm a, I'm a bit of a, bit of a, uh, maybe a cook. I, don't, I wouldn't say a chef, but, um, I cook a lot. And I had all these recipes over the past year that I've uh, developed and I wanted to share those with my uh, loved ones and my family. Um, and it was pretty funny. I, I, it, it made me think of kind of like making videos and things I've talked about here about just like using the, the bare essentials. And so I was using this little flat top propane <laughs> um, portable grill to, uh, to make fish tacos with fresh pico de gallo and spicy mayo <laughs> and they were a hit i was i was happy about that uh but but pretty pretty cool stuff and um yeah and and kind of getting getting back into uh back into action you know it seems as though a, a lot of a lot of people in, at least in the entertainment world are really rearing to get the show on the road for the lack of a better term. <laughs> and, uh, I'm, I'm here for it. I'm, I'm very, very excited and a lot of, a lot of cool opportunities have popped up recently. And, uh, you know, that's life throws you lemons. You make lemonade. And, um, and it's cool because I think a lot of the stuff that I'm currently involved in or just kind of getting into full swing, uh, everyone seems to be on the same page, uh, which is rare, but, um, really, really cool stuff. I, uh, oh, I wanted to show this shirt. Uh, the DJ guys. This is a shirt from the 1980s. Oh, here we have our Bahamas uh, cup. It almost it almost feels like I was uh, in the Bahamas. It was so beautiful. Um, just being right on the lake, it was crystal clear water, and just oh, it was perfect. Um. But my, uh, my, my mother brought this, um, up North for me. Um, and it's funny, I've talked a little bit about, uh, 
how when I was young, uh, much younger, my father was a, a disc jockey back when records and vinyl were the way that you listen to music. Um, and this was his, uh, this was his, uh, his, his branding was this here. Him and his friend were the DJ guys. And, uh, I think that's cool. <laughs> so what I, what I want to do in honor of, uh, of my father is to, um, remake this shirt and update it. Uh, with Titanic Sinclair. I thought that'd be funny in the same font. And really, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's doing the whole merch thing. I know a lot of people are, you know, have asked for, for new merch. Uh, you know, the thing, the thing that I'm at right now with that is uh, because of really a, a lack of resources in starting um, my own, uh, you know, merch line and stuff. Um, I had to kind of start with the basics, you know, your hoodies, your t-shirts and that kind of thing. Um, and since starting that, I've, I've just become friends with so many incredible people in like fashion and, um, design and, and I really want this next run to be, um, the highest quality possible. Um, cause when, when I wear like a, a vintage shirt like this, you know, they're very soft and they, there's a, they're a little bit weathered. Um, almost like the, the fender guitars, the road worn guitars that they have where they look like they're old, um, relict as they say in the guitar world. Um, but a couple of my friends do really cool aging, uh, for, for new shirts that, that appear weathered. Um, and appearance is one thing, but I find that they are so much more comfortable. So I've been figuring out and looking into how to get them, um, to be extra soft and, uh, and have that kind of, you know, vintage, I suppose, look, um, cause you know, I want to, I want to split that difference of, uh, some people don't want to wear, um, old clothes that, uh, that someone else wore. Sometimes that can be a little bit weird. You, you get a bit of a basement smell if you, um, are used to thrifting. I've done a considerable amount of, uh, thrift thrifting in my time. <laughs> so it'd be cool to have that kind of look. Um, and, and also just have it be something that, uh, people want to wear. And I've found that usually the, the things that I wear the most are nine times out of 10, the most comfortable. So, uh, I'm on it. Um, just figuring out the right way to do it. And, uh, and if anyone actually knows of any resources, that'd be, that'd be cool to, uh, to hear. Um, and I got actually, uh, I've, um, received some really cool submissions to the videos that I've put out creating things and then asking the audience, asking all of y'all, um, you know, Hey, you got any ideas? And, uh, I'm going to be doing videos, um, specifically about that because I love this communal effort. And some of the stuff that I received is really cool. And, just in hearing what's been sent to me already, I'm like, Oh, I think we can actually finish these. And, um, maybe there's a way we can put like a compilation together of, um, of this, like as a community. And then I can just kind of like, you know, uh, kind of like produce and mix them up. So we have full songs. So, um, thank you to everyone who sent stuff. I've, I got them and, uh, I'm going to be, um, I'm just kind of waiting to make sure like all of the like submissions are in, um, before I make the full blown video, which I'll, I'll probably do in the next week, um, within the next week. So, uh, if you are a, uh, a musician or an artist, 
um, or someone who's interested in getting into this kind of a thing, uh, making music, I would say uh, check out some of those videos um, down in, uh, in my channel where I uh, start songs. And what I want to do is, is um, get those to completion. And uh, may, maybe it's a thing where um, we can put it up on like Bandcamp or something like that. And then um, we can all kind of choose like a, uh, a place that we all agree upon that we, w we can like donate all of the like 100% of uh, proceeds to. Because that could be, I think, I think that could be a cool move. Um, and even if it's just like, a, you know, even if it's just like a small thing, uh, that's something that we can put out there. Um, that, that gets me excited. That makes me happy. Um, as does this Bahamas cup. Mm. You know, sometimes coffee just really hits the spot. I've been slowly reintroducing coffee in and um, I think I'm getting a bit of a tolerance now to where I don't uh, have a full-blown panic attack if I drink one cup. <laughs> a couple months ago I remember talking about it um, on here of just how like caffeine just I don't know what it is. Uh, I get all freaked out by it. Um, <laughs> but by slowly, really it was for one of these videos, the first cup of coffee I had in, pardon me, uh, the first cup of coffee I had in probably years was before making one of these. And I wonder, maybe I talked about it in that video. Um, uh, I'm, I'm sure I did. Um, but it just kind of like, it was like, Hey, time to, <laughs> let's go, let's make a video. And, um, I, uh, <laughs> ever since then, it's kind of become a part of the process to, uh, hopefully get these a little bit more, um, entertaining. I feel like my, my energy level is very mellow after, <laughs> After just, I mean, turning off and unplugging, it, it's just, I mean, I, I went, I went years of just not stopping and it was, I think maybe for, for, um, the youngsters watching this maybe who are just kind of starting their careers or that they're just getting into the hustle, the hustle and bustle, um, particularly here in the United States of America where vacationing, um, or, um, I guess everywhere else, um, holiday, you might call it, um, holiday -ing, maybe not, but, uh, I, I've noticed in other parts of the world, there's, a, there's a lot more of a, um, not a reverence, but, uh, they, they pay a lot more attention to, to just turning off, um, you know, and, uh, that, that was something, especially as I got kind of into my twenties and, um, being, being someone who I suppose you could say is, is quite driven. Um, I felt guilty taking any sort of a vacation. So even if I like booked one, and went, um, I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't turn my brain off. And, um, really for the first two days on this one, I was having trouble with that. I was, I was kind of stressing out and just kind of being like, Oh my God, I have so much I have to do. And, um, luckily, uh, just, you know, being, being around great people. Um, and, uh, you know, having a, a, a lovely girlfriend to just be like, Hey, everything's going to be fine. Enjoy it. And, uh, and I did. 
Um, and that's, uh, that's been something I've been trying to get better at. <laughs> you just, you know, you go so, so hard for so long and that, that's like normal. And then you realize it's not normal. <clears throat> finding, finding a balance, yin and yang. You can't, uh, you can't only be yin. Um, and uh, just, I mean, the 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 power of just a great conversation. Um, there's something about being around a campfire that. Doesn't it seem like when you're around a campfire, the conversations are better? You know, no one's on their phones. I had one full day. I was so unprepared for this trip. I, I forgot to bring a phone charger. And I wonder if that was like subconsciously motivated. Um, because I, I truly did not. I, I forgot to bring sunglasses. And I was going to be on a beach and in the woods um, the entire time. And I mean, partially over the years of like traveling, it kind of became one of those like, uh, I'll just, I'll buy it when I get there. Well, when you're, when you're in, uh, the woods, um, you can't do that. Or in, in my case, usually it's like Amazon and I would always think like, oh, well, you know, if it's this tiny little cable that's specific to this camera setup, I have, you know. Oh, I'll just get it on Amazon. Nope. They do not uh, deliver to um, thousands of trees. <laughs> so there was a day I, um, I just asked uh, my sister, uh, hey, can I, can I put my phone on your charger? And uh, she said yes. And I didn't look at it for a whole day. So getting, getting my, um, usage alert yesterday, uh, made me smile. What do they call that? The, uh, weekly report that, uh, your phone tells you how much time of your human existence was spent looking at a glowing rectangle this week. And, uh, mine was like significantly down and I was like, man, if I could only do this once a week, I think that'd probably be a good thing. Um, and so I think that's what I'm, what I'm going to do. And I kind of understand the, uh, the, the pull of these I guess, I guess you would call them vloggers. It's a, such a blanket term, um, which I think at least, you know, with the people who watch my kind of videos, um, you know, it's a, it's a little bit kind of a silly thing. Um, but I gotta say, I mean, I'm not, I'm not quite sure I, I talked or have talked about this one like at all, but, um, you know, when I, when I was putting together a couple years ago, like a blueprint for, um, you know, building up a channel, uh, to, to be successful, um, I was very influenced by a couple of key like YouTube people. Cause I knew the platform was going to be YouTube. Cause at this time I, I had no, um, no connection to or um help from the traditional kind of media outlets um so i was like well i'm pretty sure i can use youtube as the platform um and i remember i, I probably took a couple months just just like watching the top the top people the top creators um, and I think if there's one, uh, one person that was the most influential, at least for, for that project was probably Casey Neistat. 
um, and the idea that he was implementing a cinematic quality to daily videos. And in his case, it was like daily vlogs. And I was just like, oh, well, I can just do that. But with like daily art pieces, you know, my my prerequisite um, is, you know, like visually and aesthetically, um, my floor is could it could it exist in like a modern art museum um and i i treat especially that when i'm like directing if it's like a music video or something i just wanted to have like that kind of quality because that that kind of makes me feel like okay well i i did my best i'd be proud if this was in a on display in a in a gallery somewhere right um, and so I just, I looked at, I looked at what, uh, Casey was doing and, um, I mean, really, uh, I, I know a lot of y'all are, um, creators yourselves, uh, with video stuff. Um, and I mean, I, I've gone back and watched some of his, I mean, there's obviously like probably thousands, um, of his daily vlogs and it's just like the production elements, that he used, but whether it's just like the drone shots or like the multimedia, you know, several different types of camera formats and paying attention to, um, lenses and, and, uh, and really, I think the most compelling thing with, with his body of work, um, is his knack for, um, creative storytelling that, um, that that's a, it's relatable, you know. You can you can really relate to that guy. And um, yeah, I I always appreciated kind of like how like open about things he's he's been. Um, and so it was funny when you know at at a time I was doing daily videos and uploading constantly and just having a um, it, it it was like not not only time consuming, but life consuming. But when, when you get into that kind of a rhythm, it's just like, Oh, well, this is my life now. Um, cue any, uh, meme. Um, this is my life now meme. But, um, but that, that's kind of how it was. And it, it was interesting to me because over the years and, um, all of the kind of, I suppose, notoriety that came with, all of that. Um, it's just been a very frequent kind of thing that I've thought about and, um, and told people about typically, you know, people in an interview situation or, or people close to me. And that kind of, when I tell them like, well, I, I just looked at what Casey Neistat was doing. Um, and you know, this is a big creative conversation because, um, a lot of people looked at what he was doing and, and just did that. Um, which, Hey, you know, it works. Um, who's the guy, who's the guy who was, maybe it was one of the Paul brothers. They, they were selling some sort of, um, like master class on how to go viral and um oh uh I watched a video by um Curtis oh I don't want to um I don't want to mispronounce his name um because I've watched actually a lot of his videos and um they're super funny um let's see his name is, uh, Curtis Connor. Yeah. Um, shout out to Curtis Connor. He did a whole video about, um, you know, kind of these like people who like had success on, um, on YouTube. And then, you know, inevitably ev everyone has that, um, nosedive. And that's just, that's a, that's a part of it. That's what people got to realize. You can't, um, I, I never really fell victim to the whole, like once the views stop going down, cause that's something that's actually, um, 
you always, you always see the video from like the popular YouTube people where they'll just do the, um, I'm taking a break for my mental health thing. Um, and, uh, I get it <laughs> like for sure. Like I, I totally, totally get it. Um, but a lot of the times that that tends to coincide with, um, you know, if you're, if you're really obsessive about the analytics and you know, you, you have one video that just doesn't perform, perform, um, as well. And a lot of people, um, get consumed by it. And, um, I understand if, if that's kind of, if that's your, primary source of income that can be very, very scary and, and add a lot of stress. Um, I, I suppose I just, f I feel very, very lucky that, um, even when everything was crazy, crazy, I mean, it, it, it used to be like, Oh, if, if we don't have a million views on a video, like that's a failure. <laughs> like it's, it's funny to think that that was just like normal. Um, but when, when the, the view started going down, you know, for me, it was just kind of like, Oh, you know, this has happened to everyone else, you know, and, and why would I be any different? Um, and you can't, you can't expect that kind of thing to just last forever. Um, so some of these people go on to then, you know, become snake oil salesmen or women saleswomen. and do these courses. But anyway, the thing that Curtis Connor dove into in his video, which is amazing. Seriously, if you haven't watched him, check him out. He's like one of my favorite, um, one of my favorite people to watch lately. It's super funny. Um, and so he like bought this like master class and like, um, and in it, it basically is just, they were just like, yeah, just copy, um, this, you know, literally use the same thumbnail and title just like put yourself in it instead of whoever the person is who did it and um just wild to think that that's how some people operate um and you know i i thought about that because it's like you know had i just implemented oh i'll just do what casey neistat um does like maybe that would have worked but to me you know at every every creative thing that exists is influenced by another creative thing. And the most interesting ones I find are when you take multiple creative things and put them together. And at that time, really, it was kind of as simple as like, well, what if, what if I did just like daily kind of videos a la, um, Casey Neistat, you know, have them be like produced in a way that's like, like how, how, how are there so many of these and how is there one every day? Um, but then it was kind of like, well, but what if it was kind of like Lynchian, um, which is, you know, David Lynch is one of my favorite directors. Um, and certainly there's, there's elements of, um, of his work that have absolutely made their way, you know, and influenced with his influence for me, it's more like a little bit about tone, I guess um, feeling slightly uncomfortable. Um, but then there's all of the kind of like fine art world that I've, I've just always loved the cleanliness and sterile quality of a gallery walking into a museum. And it's just like, you know, plain walls and, um, and the work, um, you know, the, the art, um, so, you know, all that kind of stuff together and then mixing in a lot of like comedy elements, um, you know, I guess a lot of, uh, saying, saying like silly things, but, but putting really dramatic music underneath it. Um, I always really appreciated that in a lot of like just goofball kind of, um, 
oddball comedy movies that I like where they'll have like a, a very serious moment um, that's ridiculous and the music just makes it feel a certain way. Um, you know, that, that was kind of like the, the stew. Um, and then just having the focus be on music because that's, that was, that was what was being sold, you know? But then you make hundreds of those and it's just like, um, I think that just results in, uh, setting up a light and a camera and, uh, talking for an hour. <laughs> but that's, that's just kind of, maybe that's just where I've been at. Um, maybe artistically is, I just didn't, I, I wanted, uh, I never felt like I had been uh, like honest, um, on camera. You know, there's, there's always honesty in, in the work, but, um, I, I had, I had to get, um, I had to get to a point to where I could set it up and press record. Um, and I still have to remind myself like, Hey, look into the camera. <laughs> when I'm talking to, you know, a person, uh, in real life, it's, uh, you know, eye contact is very important. Um, but it's weird because when you're looking into the lens or into the monitors, it's like you're looking into a mirror and that that's been a bit of a psychological thing for me is I need to like, um, get comfortable looking into that mirror. You know, first I had to get comfortable looking into any mirror and, um, a lot of work went into that. And just being like, hey man, you're all right. <laughs> you can do better. And I have my little reminders now. Uh, I never, never had tattoos until uh, I felt like I had... Um, like every time I look at whatever it is on my body, um, it should have intention and purpose. And, um, I like that. I like talking to people about their tattoos. There was a woman at the restaurant, um, yesterday. She had a really cool piece on her arm. It was like the most vibrant colors I, I'd ever seen on a tattoo. Must 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 have been pretty new. You can catch a sneak peek when I uh, move around here. My light back there. That one's. I think that one's called an LC five hundred. If you're interested. Just one of those like light bars, you know, kind of looks like a lightsaber, and it's cool because uh, <laughs> one of my close friends sent me a video. Um, he's getting heavy, heavy, heavy into video. Um, I mean, we grew up making videos together, but his stuff is just visually amazing. And um, he's like, "Hey, man, I got this light. Check it out." And I was like, "Is that a LC five <laughs> hundred?" And it was pretty cool light and, and very affordable. Uh, battery life could be a little bit better, but, uh, you know, you compare it to like an Astera tube, those Titan tubes are what, like $800 per. Um, and every once in a while you'll see, there was some TV show I saw. Um, 
I think that was, I saw that when I was at the airport as well. That's like kind of the only time I really see like the news. Um, and it's hypnotizing. I mean, obviously it's designed to be that way, but the only time I really see it like on or like a modern kind of like game show thing, it's when I'm like either at a hotel or an airport. But this, this one in particular was, um, I think it was called the cube. And, uh, the entire time I was kind of at the, uh, restaurant in the airport, I was just trying to figure out cause they didn't have the closed caption on and I couldn't hear it. So I was trying to like figure out like, what's, what is this? Um, and you know, this guy was just kind of like in a like glass cube with all this crazy lighting. And he was like blindfolded, like putting balls in like, uh, um, on like these little like ramps. I, I couldn't figure it out. Um, but I did notice they had like an array of around this like cube set up, um, for the stage or the, the, uh, production stage. Um, there was like, I don't know, like 50 Astera tubes. I was like, wow, that's like $50,000 just in tube lighting. Crazy network television budgets. Um, So on the flight, I watched a movie. Sorry, I have to Google it. Um, but it hit extremely close to home, and it was starring Elle Fanning. It was not the Neon Demon, but uh, you could tell that there was a lot of influence from the Neon Demon. Um, that's one of my favorite movies of all time, by the way. If you haven't seen that, check that out. Uh, this movie is called Teen Spirit. And my jaw was on the floor the entire time because it is as real as it gets. I identified with it. And I think if you watch it, you'll know why. Um, beautifully done. A um, little bit heavy on the anamorphic flares. You know me. I like them. Um, but you know, they don't have to be in every shot. Um, but I get it. Uh, beautiful cinematography and the performances were, were wonderful. Um, and I, I highly recommend it because yeah, it, uh, it felt like someone made a movie, uh, literally about my life for, um, a couple of years there, uh, kind of spooky. And I want to, contact the writer and or director and say, you know, don't you? I think they'll know what I mean because they've been there or clo in close proximity to the system. So I'd recommend you wa uh, watch that. Um, and, uh, I, uh, I suppose as far as like a music recommendation for this week, um, you know, I, I had to, uh, drive, um, quite, quite a distance, um, to get to, uh, to get to the, uh, the lake. And, um, it's funny when you, when you go to Detroit, uh, which is where I flew into, um, the radio stations, cause, uh, Windsor's right there, which is Canada, um, right across the river. I think a lot of people who have never been to Detroit before don't realize like Canada is just literally across the river right there. Um, so you pick up the Canadian radio stations and it's pretty cool because, um, they have a thing uh, nationally where it's some sort of like, maybe it's like 20% or I don't know what the percentage, but um, a, a designated percentage of the music that they play on any of their um, radio stations has to be a Canadian artist, which I think is pretty cool. Um, but you do end up kind of hearing the same handful of, globally successful artists over and over. And I think that's kind of how they get away with it. But, um, 
but I also heard heard a lot of stuff that um, was brand new to me. Um, but it was funny, kind of you know driving for hours and just only li- listening to the radio and um, listening to a lot of the radio stations I grew up with, and it's it's pretty humorous. Um, but I was really blown away by um, several songs. Um, and one of them was, um, what's love got to do with it? Tina Turner, uh, particularly because of her vocal performance. It's, it's very, very incredible. I never really, I always knew she had like a real, um, standout vocal ability, um, but I had honestly, I had never really listened to uh, or paid attention to how, how good she is. Um, so that one blew me away. And then I was blown away by uh, Cher and um, what was the one from Cher that I really was blown away by? Um, if I could turn back time big hit maybe her her biggest hit next to i got you babe which i believe was sunny and share um big influence by the way kind of starting off we're going back even earlier but that's uh that was a thing that a lot of producers recommended i lean into Maybe not the best advice I ever received, but um, yeah, Cher's uh, performance uh, vocally in that song is is really something else. Um, and there's some really cool key change moments that I I got really excited about. Um, but uh, you know, ever ever since I I did that video about um making a a chill 80s vibe. I've really kind of been into that sound and, um, you know, just that Yamaha DX7 thing. Um, And I just, I got a whole new like pool of references just from driving and listening to uh, the radio. (laughs) Um, the glory of love came on. I am a man who will fight for your honor. Check out the chords on that. If you're a musician, pretty cool. And, um, yeah, those are kind of all over the place, but that's, those were the ones that, uh, got my juices flowing. And, um, I think, yeah, I think, I think it's a good, uh, it's a good thing to turn the radio on. Sometimes we live in such a Spotify heavy, you know, playlist heavy, algorithmically influenced, um, world now. And the nice thing about those classic rock or, uh, I, I like the soft rock. I think, I think that's the direction I'm kind of headed actually borderlining on yacht rock with the new stuff that I'm making, but I'm just really focused on songwriting and, you know, Michael McDonald, um, has been a big influenced influence. Uh, some of that Richard Mark stuff is really good. And, um, yeah, I, I like, I like music and just, you know, when you listen to those classic rock or soft rock or, you know, hits of the eighties and nineties. Um, you hear songs that you maybe haven't heard in a long time, or or maybe if you're young, you've never heard, or maybe it's just, you've heard them in the background. Um, but you know, they'll, uh, you realize how much is copied and pasted these days. Not that that's better for better or worse, but, um, it's just different. And I think for maybe the past 15, 20 years, uh, complex musical arrangements have been outshined by production techniques 
um, which as, as I've talked about here, you know, kind of date a song and you hear it now, you know, like that's, what's kind of funny about the, the DX seven electric piano sound that I'm obsessed with. Um, now when you hear it, I know, um, maybe like Alex Cameron is utilizing it. Uh, he, he does a lot of like saxophone too, which I appreciate. Um, you just, you don't hear a lot of that anymore and it has a nostalgic quality. So I guess that's kind of what I'm getting at. I'm excited about it. Um, so yeah, there you have it. Um, I appreciate you watching and I appreciate you being here. Um, feels good to be back in the swing of things. Um, channel members, I will have a considerable amount of goodies, uh, this, this week as I get back into, um, civilization <laughs> and am able to use the internet. Uh, <laughs> you know, they say my service provider says, uh, I, they have the nation's largest coverage, but they all say that, um, but it's kind of weird that there's still parts uh, in the in the United States even that uh, can't handle the modern living experience. Pretty strange. Ooh. Anyway. Okay. I'm starting to feel like a little bit back to normal. Um, <laughs> cool. Um, well, Hey, thanks for watching. Uh, I've got some pretty, pretty crazy new stuff that, uh, is in the mix. Hopefully some of that will start rolling out this week. Um, for everyone and for, uh, channel members, we'll be seeing you very soon and, uh, stay cool. Peace and love. If you have the opportunity sleep under the stars feels pretty deluxe uh which is hilarious because that's how it was for a very long time um anyway love you guys take care <laughs>